Hey everybody, thanks for watching. Let's get started. Uh, starting with number one, we've got a, a one step equation where we need to divide by eight on both sides. We divide by eight on both sides. Remember that eight divided by eight is one. 48 divided by eight is six. So we have one y equals six. All right, here we have a, a negative x divided by 4, or x divided by negative 4. Uh, so to make that a positive, we'd want to first of all multiply by a negative. So negative times negative is positive, so we're going to multiply this side by a negative something. Um, well, x is being divided by 4, so the way to do the opposite of that is to multiply by 4. So we're multiplying by negative 4 altogether. Negative times negative is positive. 4 divided by 4 is 1. So we're just left with x. And 16 times negative 4 uh, is negative 64. Okay, here we need to uh, solve for x, where x is being multiplied by a fraction. And uh, if you'll notice in the, the last two problems here, y and x, they're both 1y and 1x. Uh, we want to have a 1 multiplied by the x. Here we have a 6 7 multiplied by the x. So if we multiply 6 7 by 7 6 right, we'll get 42 over 42. Maybe I'll put that over here. 42 over 42 times x. Right? Multiply 7 times 6, you get 42. 6 times 7, you get 42. Multiplying straight across. And 42 divided by 42 is just 1. Right? And 1 times x is x. So that's what we have on the left side of the equation. We'll multiply this by the same thing, 7 6 Okay, and let's see if we can do some cross-canceling here. See if 126 can be divided by 6. It's 21. Uh, and 21 times 7 now. 147. Okay, and solve this equation. This is what we have, what we call a two-step equation. Okay. Uh, we haven't done it yet on this video, but uh, so many times before we have subtracted, right? Subtracted. Um, sometimes I will see people divide by 10. Well, technically you could divide by 10 right now. Uh, when I say technically, I mean you would have to divide the 2 by 10 as well. And you have to divide the 92 by 10. 92 doesn't divide, does not divide by 10 nicely, right? And then you have... It's just a mess. What I suggest you do first is just think of this as one thing by itself, kind of glued together by multiplication, and get rid of this guy here. Let's cancel out this 2 that's being added on. How do we cancel that out? We subtract 2. Right? You take something you add to, then you subtract 2. It's like nothing ever happened. So now you have 10x equals 90. Now we divide by 10, just like we did in the first problem on this, on this quest. And when we do that, we get x is 9. Okay, next page. All right, very similar to the problem we just did, kind of combined with the problem before that, where there was a, a fraction involved. So we'll first subtract 14, okay? And uh, 7 sixths y will equal uh, let's see, 11. And then we'll multiply by the reciprocal of this fraction, 6 sevenths. This gives us 42 over 42 again. Multiply by 6 sevenths here. Now 7 and 11 are not going to cross cancel with each other at all. So we're just going to get the product of these two fractions. Multiply straight across, you get 66. Multiply straight across, you get 7. 66 over 7. Uh, here's a big messy looking thing of an equation. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is combine like terms. Negative 5x plus 8x is 3x, and 14 plus 7 is 21. Okay, now we have classic subtract both sides. All right, subtract 21 from both sides. Uh, 13 minus 21, 8, negative 8. And we divide by 3, and x is equal to negative 8 thirds. Okay, here, uh, who can resist the urge to distribute when they see a number multiplied by parentheses? So 
So we'll do that. We'll get negative 12n, and negative 4 times negative 12 is positive 48. All right. Uh, now we have like terms. We'll combine like terms. 8n minus 12n is 6n plus 48 is equal to 13. We'll subtract the 48 from both sides. 6n equals, let's just speed this up, 13 minus 48, negative 35. And we'll divide by 6 on both sides. 35 and 6 don't have any common factors, so we'll just leave it as negative 35 over 6. All right, just switched over. I realized I had the wrong version of this next question, but it's all fixed now. So we will do this problem. Um, so you're saving up to buy a car. Your parents have generously offered to pay 600. Uh, it costs 1,700. Uh, so you have this this car. It costs 1,700 dollars, and you have some money that that you already have earned. Some money you're going to earn, and you're trying to figure out how much uh, money you need and uh, by extension how many hours you need to work right so what we really have is this kind of balancing situation where here's the cost of a car right and here is um, money that you have to spend money to spend okay some of you have some of it you're going to be getting soon uh, but all we need to do is add up all the money that we have to spend, and it needs to equal the cost of the car. So let's start adding up money. We have $600 from our parents. We got uh, $77 here from uh, mowing lawns. Uh, we, then we've got money from work. How do we calculate the money that we've earned from work? Well, we've got, let's say, 27 hours in July, and we know we earn $11, hour, $11 an hour, so 27 times eleven dollars an hour plus twenty times eleven dollars an hour plus twenty one times eleven dollars an hour now that's what we've earned in the last three months how many hours we've worked in the last three months we're gonna work some this month right and earn the same amount eleven dollars an hour we just don't know how many hours we're gonna work so we're gonna have that same eleven times an unknown number of hours, x. So let's add all this up. Uh, just pulling out the old trusty calculator here. 600 plus 77 plus 27 times 11 plus 20 times 11 plus 21 times 11. And just double checking, proofreading. All right, so there's a 1425. That's money that we have, plus money that we'll get equals 1700. Uh, and we just need to solve for x. If uh, I was just given this equation, I could follow in my own footsteps from previous problems on this quest. Subtract 1425 from both sides. So 1700 minus 1425, 275. Divide by 11. Here it comes, 275 divided by 11, 25. Okay, 25 hours is how many hours I would have to work in, let's see, July, August, that was September, in October, back when we took this the first time. Okay, now we've got variables on both sides. Well, let's have variables not on both sides. Let's cancel out the variables on one side, and uh, then we won't have variables on that side. So let's subtract five x's from this side. We'll have no more x's. We have to do the same thing on both sides. And there we go, three x plus four equals 25. And now it looks like that old two-step equation where I will subtract and divide. And there we go, x equals seven. Okay, we need to solve for x, and this looks a little tricky because we have uh, lots of different letters in there, and what are we supposed to do? We treat the letters like any other number that we wanted to not have on that side with x. Okay, so uh, if I had an x inside of parentheses being multiplied by a number, I would distribute. 
that thing into the parentheses, so I get 6 plus 2x plus the a that's left out here equals f. I want to get x by itself, so I just kind of, you know, don't think about that for a second. I just think of it as glued together by the multiplication of 2 and x, and cancel out the 6 and this a. So I would subtract whatever is being added to this, right? Subtract a, subtract 6. So now I have 2x equals f minus a minus 6, divide by 2 on both sides, and x is equal to f minus a minus 6 over 2. There we go. Uh, solve for q. We're going to solve for q here. It's really the same as um, this equation right here. We've got something added to our variable expression here, and we want to get it by itself, so we subtract first. So I'm going to subtract 15n. It's this big hunk of stuff that I don't care about. I only care about what q is. So now I have 10q is equal to 49 minus 15q. And now I'll divide by 10 on both sides. So q is equal to 49 minus 15n over 10. That's it. OK, solve for the equation. All right, see, I have variables on both sides. I want to cancel those out on, on one side. But first, to be able to do anything with this expression, I'm going to have to distribute the negative 2. So plus 14 minus 2x. You know what we could do? Let's do this. Let's combine like terms on this side first. 3x plus 14. And on this side, we'll distribute the negative 2. Okay, negative 2 times 4x, negative 8x, negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Uh, let's see, now we'll combine like terms on the other side. 9 minus 4, that's 5, minus 8x. Now we want to not have x's on both sides. We're going to cancel out the x's on one of the sides, either side, it doesn't matter. I'm going to choose to cancel out the 8x, the negative 8x here. And, you know, negative 8x plus 8x is 0. I'll add 8x on the other side as well. Got to keep it balanced. Uh, 11x plus 14 equals 5. And the old subtract and divide. Subtract 14. 11x equals 9, a negative 9. Divide by 11 on both sides. And x equals negative 9 over 11. Uh, just double check and make sure that's a 9. All right, so there's a video rental club. They charge $50 to become a member, 99 cents for each video. Another charges no membership fee, but $3 for each video. How much, uh, how many videos would you have to rent to make this first uh, setup a better deal? Um, well, how much does it cost for this first club? Well, for zero videos, it costs $50. For one video, it costs $50 plus 99 cents. For two videos, it costs $50 plus 99 cents times the two videos. And so on and so on and so on, right? And so for any number of videos, we just replace this 2 or this 1 or this 0 with the number of videos. Okay? The number of videos will be played by x. Right? It'll be the x will stand in the place of any number of videos that you want to plug into that spot. Uh, to be multiplied by 99 cents. Um, on the other hand, you have $3, okay, when they have no membership fee. So it's the same story, just no membership fee, just cross that out, and it's 3 times x, $3 times the number of videos. Now, right now, wh with these three examples, zero videos, one video, two videos, this is a uh, not a good deal compared to the 3x, right? The two videos would just be $6, or this is a uh, Fifty-one ninety-eight. That's really more expensive than uh, the six dollars we're talking about here. But imagine you were running a hundred videos, right? A hundred videos. Well, a hundred videos from this guy would be uh, that'd be ninety-nine dollars plus the fifty dollars would be one hundred and forty-nine dollars. Not a bad deal, I guess. I don't know. It's a lot of money. Um, from this other guy, if you rented for 100 videos from this other store, it'd be $300, right? This is almost half the cost. So at some point, this thing that used to be more expensive becomes less expensive, right? So you can look at the, the graph of this. Like, 
One of them starts off at $50 for zero videos. The other starts at $3 for zero videos. And this guy's trucking along at 99 cents a video, and every time you rent a video, it goes up 99 cents. But this guy, every time you video, rent a video, it goes up $3, right? It goes up much faster. And at some point, where this used to be more expensive, right? It now is less expensive. And this guy that was less expensive is now more expensive. And at some point, right, there's some number of videos where the cost is the same. The cost is the same. So let's find that point. Let's find where the cost is the same, right? Find the number of videos that makes them both exactly the same price and go a little bit past that, right? So that we'll know we're into the area where uh, the first option is the better option. So we'll subtract 99x or 0.99x from both sides. Uh, 50 equals 2.01x. Then we'll divide by 2.01. 2.01. Okay, I don't think that's going to come out to be a nice whole number. So we'll figure out what to do at that point. That's 24.88 approximately. So x is approximately 24.88. Now remember what that means. It means that 24.88 videos, they cost exactly the same. But that uh, doesn't work for us for two reasons. We don't want them to be exactly the same. We want the other one to be a better deal. We want the first one to be a better deal right here. Uh, and also, you can't read 0.88 of a video, right? But if we bump it up to 25, it's first of all a, uh, a realistic number of videos that you can rent. And it's just past the point where they're the same price and into the territory where the first club is a better deal. Uh, next, we're going to solve for B. We're going to solve for B in the same way that we have, uh, at least in two of the problems that we've done so far, where we had a fraction, right? We're going to, on this side, multiply by the reciprocal. Multiply by the reciprocal on the other side. Because what we get here is 40 over 40 times B. That's just 1 times B. That's just B. And the left side, what is that? It's 8 fifths Y. So B is equal to eight-fifths y. That's what we put right there. Uh, this is the last one. Solve the following equations. I should have put equation, of course. For y, solve for y. Get y by itself. Well, here it is. Remember, to, the negative stays with this term. You can't just switch it over to this guy. It has to stay with the y term. It's a negative 5y. So let's get rid of this 2x. We'll subtract the 2x, right, because there's a positive there. It's basically a 2x being added to negative 5y. Subtract 2x from both sides. We get negative 5y is equal to 5 minus 2x, or negative 2x plus 5, if you like. Uh, we'll divide by negative 5, negative 5, and y is equal to 5 minus 2x divided by negative 5. Looks good. We could divide each of these by 5, right? 5 divided by negative 5 is negative 1. Negative 2x divided by negative 5 would be a positive 2 fifths x. Okay. Either way is fine. That's that. Uh, yeah, that's the last one. So thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, that's all.